Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan and I'm really excited for this movie because uh, in Star Trek Into Darkness Benedict Cumberbatch plays Khan and I think he's a really cool villain although I don't think he gets the service that he deserves in Star Trek Into Darkness and so I'm really excited to see this movie Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan because we get to see Khan again but also because I've heard from a lot of people over the course of my life and including on the comments or some comments comments about the Star Trek movies on my YouTube channel is that The Wrath of Khan is one of the best Star Trek movies. So I'm really, really excited for it. Also, so it today is the day before I leave for my trip. So I just posted my schedule today. It's a Sunday and I'm saying that I'm going on my trip and stuff. And so people are commenting kind of like about the new Star Trek, like Star Trek's coming out in two weeks on YouTube and stuff like that. So people are trying to like give me tips and stuff like that. And I just saw that some people were saying I should watch some episodes of the show before I at least go into Star Trek 2. There was like one or two episodes that kind of related towards on and stuff like that maybe introducing the character to us and I really wanted to watch those episodes but I only saw that today I leave for my trip tomorrow at 4 a.m. and this is the only time I get like I only this is the only time I guess that I have to watch the movie and so I don't unfortunately have time to watch those episodes but if I did have time I would have watched them so I'm really sorry that I didn't get to and since I'm at home there is no lighting today it is just the lights in my room but if I was gonna go with the lighting today I think I'd go like a yellow like a dusty yellow brown color I don't know why but that's kind of just what I'm feeling and if you'd like to check out more of my reactions you can head over to my patreon with uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early there are also two exclusive patreon movies a month that you guys on patreon get to choose so thank you so so much if you check it out now let's get back to the video okay I'm really excited to see the wrath of Khan I'm really excited to just see Khan in this movie as well as everyone else in the Enterprise. Even though I haven't seen the Star Trek show, I still really enjoyed the first movie. It was very slow, but the special effects were really good. I know it was like almost like a remastered version, so I'm expecting the special effects to be a little bit dropped compared to the first one, but I am still super, super excited. So without further ado, let's hop into Star Trek II, The Wrath, The Wrath, The Wrath of Khan. Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan. Ricardo Montalban as Khan. I'm excited to see his performance. James Horner, no way. We got Jerry Goldsmith and now we have James Horner. What the heck? We have just insane composers left, right, and center. You know, we're only in the 22nd century. We're close to this, actually. Leaving section 14 for section 15. Look at all our characters, our beautiful characters. Project parabolic. Who are you? Who are you, lady? We have struck a gravitic mine and have lost all power. Our hardest this is the starship in the Kobayashi Maru test, like in the first Star Trek movie. The first one, meaning the J.J. Abrams one. I'm aware of my responsibilities, mister. Yeah, this is definitely a test. This is definitely a test. Everyone is just so calm and collected. I would not be. I'd be screaming my head off if this was real. Alert. Klingon torpedoes activated. Alert. Evasive action. Oh, that's unfortunate, lady. Engage auxiliary power. Prepare to return fire. Ah! Oh, what the heck? Is this actually real? Is this not a test? Boy, all hands abandoned ship. Repeat, all hands abandoned ship. Alright, open her up. Oh my god, it is a test. So then what happened to these fellas? Any suggestions, Admiral? Prayer, Mr. Savick. The Klingons don't take prisoners. <laughs> what an entrance. I don't believe this was a fair test of my command abilities. And why not? Because there was no way to win. Yeah, but that's the point of the test. Wouldn't it be easier to just put an experienced crew back on the ship? Galloping around the cosmos is a game for the young doctor. I think you should go back on the sh ship, Kirk. Oh, by the way... Thank you for this. I know of your fondness for antiques. <laughs> a book is an antique. What is it? Klingon aphrodisiacs? No. No bones. Wouldn't it be cool to watch this movie in 2283, though, when that, when that juice was made? That would be kind of cool. Damn it, Jim. What the hell is the matter with you? <laughs> I love it whenever he says, damn it, Jim. 
Hiding behind rules and regulations. Who am I hiding from? From yourself. Yeah. I'm your doctor, and I'm your friend. Get back your command. Yes, do it. Listen to him. Oh, baby. That looks good. That is an ugly ship, though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's an ugly ship. Requirement of a test site for the Genesis experiment. These guys are all dying. I bet you. Standard orbit, please. <laughs> They're all wearing red shirts, and the red shirts always die. But it may only be a particle of preanimate matter. Then again, it may not. It's true. She's got a point. Every time we have dealings with Starfleet, I get nervous. But why? Remember that overgrown boy scout you used to hang around with? That's exactly the kind of Listen, man. Listen, kiddo. I'm a... Jim Kirk was many. I knew they were talking about Jim Kirk. <laughs> Oh, those effects are good. Those effects are really good. There's nothing here. The tricorder must be broken. This looks really beautiful, though. It's a beautiful shot. Oh, you don't want to go in there. You don't want to go in there. It's giving me, like, the thing slash alien vibes, and that's not a good vibe to get. Ooh, what's that? Don't touch it. Moby the king of the year. Yeah, a smart person lives here, that's for sure. Oh, no. We've got to get out of here now. I'm assuming he knows the ship from the show, and he knows that Khan's in it. Those are sick gloves. Is this gonna be a con reveal, please? Ah, I think that's con. Ah, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. I don't know you. I do know you. I never forget a face. Oh, Mister. He's already so sick. What do you want with us? Sir, I demand to be- You are in a position to demand nothing. <laughs> yeah, so true. Of the Botany Bay. My room here, 15 years ago, by Captain James T. Kirk. Oh, he's got a little vendetta. Well, had sworn to live and die at my command 200 years before you were born. Oh, these are all genetically engineered people as well? Never told you how the Enterprise picked up the Botany Bay lost in space from the year 1996. 1996? Sent 70 of us into exile on this barren sand heap. Oh, wow, 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 this is so cool. Waste. Admiral Kirk never bothered to check on our progress. Oh. Kirk was your host. He repaid his hospitality by trying to steal his ship and murder him. That sounds like a good episode of TV, won't lie. Allow me to introduce you to Seth. Oh my god, I love his outfit. Oh my god, he looks like Conan the Barbarian, but old. Oh, I don't like that. Not instantly. Ew, sure. ew, ew. Those little larva egg things. Uh, this has the effect of rendering the victim extremely susceptible to uh, suggestion. It's a truth serum bug. Not quite domesticated. No, I don't like this at all. Please don't do this. Kirk was only doing his duty. Oh, uh, they're like little moving buggers. <laughs> not disturbing at all. And tell me where I may find James Kirk. I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited. He is so menacing already. Like what an entrance for someone who's never seen the show. Enterprise, this is Admiral Kirk's party on final approach. Enterprise welcomes you. Oh, it's the sexy ship again. Open the airlock. Permission to come aboard again. Welcome, Admiral. Oh, Box of captain. Midshipman first class, Peter Preston, engineer's mate. Sir! First training voyage, Mr. Preston. Yes, sir. I see. 
I hope something bad doesn't happen to Preston, but why would you focus on him if something doesn't happen? Ishvengi, call me. Fair enough. Wing out Lamy Buffett. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I love the different languages in Star Trek and they're so fleshed out in not just the movie but in just like real life. Like you can really learn these languages if you wanted to. What about the rest of the inspection? <laughs> <laughs> who needs expect who what, what am I trying to say? Who needs inspection? You may clear all moorings. Air equalization automatic. Such a beautiful cockpit. Oh man, I wanna go on set for one of these things one day. Take her out, Mr. Savick. Spock is so nice. Oh my god, he has such a heart. The score is slapping right now. Yeah, it's so epic. This guy was there literally in the last movie waving. Has he just been standing there the whole time? Just Is he just waving perpetually forever? Who knows? Oh man, that was a gorgeous shot. Oh, I want to go on the Enterprise so bad. I don't think there's another piece of information we could squeeze into the memory banks. Next time we'll design a bigger one. Mm -hmm. I love how both futuristic slash retro the technology is. All materials of Project Genesis will be transferred to this ship for immediate testing on CT Alpha 6. Hmm, interesting. You realize, sir, they will attempt to contact Admiral Kirk and confirm the order. Yeah, he does probably. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant, are you wearing your hair differently? <laughs> yeah, you think? I fail to resolve the situation. There's no correct resolution. It's a test of character. But what if there was? That's a little joke. Humor. It is a difficult concept. <laughs> it can be for some. I have Genesis. Who's taking me? On whose authority can I do this? No one's authority. Now you gotta go to find Genesis. Now you gotta go find Genesis. Oh my god, Khan is playing a good game. Starfleet has kept the peace for a hundred years. I cannot and will not subscribe to your interpretation of this event. I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad she still has a little bit of faith in Starfleet. If memory serves, regular one is a scientific research laboratory. I told Starfleet... Your memory always serves, Spock. As with all living things, each according to his gifts. Of course, the ship is yours. I'm so excited because Khan is such an is such a foe and the ship is so ill-equipped with this training crew. Oh my god, I love it. The stakes are so raised. I am a Vulcan. I have no ego to bruise. <laughs> Spock's so nice. If I may be so bold, it was yeah. a mistake for you to accept promotion. Yeah, it was. Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yeah, he said a line that sounds awesome. We'll be going to warp speed. Aye, sir. Course plotted for regular one ad. Engage warp edge. I want to see the warp effects. I loved the warp effects in the first movie. Oh, that looks really cool. The ship still is not cool. I'm sorry, I just cannot get over the ship. It looks bad. Perdition's flames before I give him up. Whoa, wow, you really have a vendetta. You mean give it up to whom? It might help my analysis if I knew what Genesis wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Carol Marcus. Yes. What exactly is Genesis? I wonder what their history is in the show. Were they lovers? At the subatomic level into life-generating matter of equal mass. Whoa. State matter is reorganized with life-generating results. That's so interesting. Cosmic problems of population and food supply. The usefulness of this process becomes clear. Yeah, these problems are still around today, guys. Destroy such life in favor of its new matrix. Its new wow. matrix. Wow. That's a powerful weapon. It's literally a way to play God, and you should never be able to be able to play but God. I said be able so many times in that sentence. Your passions, they will be your undoing. Logic suggests... Logic? Who cares about logic? Scrap logic, Spock. What do you make of her? It's one of ours, Admiral. It's Reliant. Reliant? You can't rely on this one. When communications have not been established... Lieutenant, the Admiral is well aware of the regulations. Oh, get 
owned, Ad or Lieutenant. Get owned, Lieutenant. Do you know the Klingon proverb that tells us revenge is a dish that is best served cold? That's a Klingon proverb? That's an Earth proverb, mate. This is damn peculiar. You think we're gonna have a Kobayashi Maru situation in this movie? Their shields are going up. Lock faces and ties. Oh! Fire! Eee, that's not great. That's not great. This movie already has five times more action than the first Star Trek movie, and it's just this one sequence alone. Save him, save him, save him! No, it's like the Titanic! They knew exactly where to hit us. Oh. Yeah, they did. Things aren't looking good. What's left? Just the battering, sir. I can have auxiliary power in a few minutes. We don't have a few minutes! Yeah, you got, you got one minute max. Can you give me phaser power? A few shots, sir. That not enough again. crying. I, too, would be in shock. On screen, sir. Oh! Come. Oh! I'll have myself beamed aboard. Spare my crew. I make you a count. He's selfless. Give me some time to recall the data on our computers. I give you 60 seconds, Admiral. Oh, wow. 45 seconds. The prefix code. It's all we've got. Oh, they're turning around, they're turning around. Damn. The glasses, the glasses. To lower her shield. Assuming he hasn't changed the combination, he's quite intelligent. 15 seconds. I don't think he thought of this one, though. In my judgment, you simply have no alternative. That's fair enough. Ah, uh, it's working! It's working! Where's the override? The override! Fire! Ah, well done, James T. Kirk! Mr. Savick, you go right on quoting regulations. Yes, 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 listen to her next time. Good. One sec, Huxley. Oh! Was that that guy who talked at the start of the movie who I said that something's gonna happen to him? Oh, and the blood, on the blood on his shirt. Best speed to regular one, Kirk. I'm sorry, Scotty. <laughs> Approaching. That looks beautiful. Unremarkable ores. Essentially a great rock in space. And Reliant could be hiding behind that rock. A distinct I bet they're gonna use that bomb, the life bomb, the Genesis bomb on it. A beam into a hazardous area without armed escort. There's no such regulation. Yeah, there is. As you was. Jim, be careful. We will. When she said armed escorts, I was like, okay, the escorts are gonna die. But now she's the armed escort, and I don't want her to die. I love the outfit. Taze is unstunned. And we have phasers in this movie. They didn't use phasers at all in the last movie. This is literally a horror movie right now. This is actually like an alien movie at the moment. Behind you! Oh, not dead person. Not a dead person. Oh my god, are they all dead? That works. Oh my god. Oh, sir. Oh, uh, that is a lie. He couldn't find them. Even the data banks were empty. Erased. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Time to blow you to bits. Where's wow. Ryan's crew? Dead? Kirk above all of his other plans. Did he make it down here? It was not my impression. He spent most of his time trying to ring the information. Do you think they still have the bugs in their heads? I feel like they do. These coordinates are deep inside regular. 
a planetoid we know to be lifeless. I said they were doing deep cave exploration for stage two. Situation is grave, Admiral. We won't have main power for six days. Auxiliary. Oh, they're listening in. Let's go. Savic. Go. Where are we going? Go to the moon. Sound design on point with the teleportation devices. Ooh, what the heck? You can see who these people are. Oh, I guess you don't trust Starfleet though. That makes sense. Where's Dr. Marcus? I'm Dr. Marcus. Jim! Punch him in the face again. I'm afraid it's even harder than you think, Doctor. Please. Ugh. Don't move. Ah, uh, yeah, I told you they have the, they have the bugs. Knew it, you son of a bitch! Don't Absolutely decimated that person. I like how it's like the person the person is fighting against the bug. Kill him, Terrell. He's gonna shoot himself, isn't he? Oh. Wow, absolutely evaporated. No, Chekhov better not die. If Chekhov dies, I'm suing everything. God sakes. What is it? Step on it, kill it. Thank you. Con bloodsucker. You're gonna have to do your own dirty work now. Do you hear me? Do you? Looks like Kirk's a bigger megamind than you are. Perhaps I no longer need to try. Oh my god, he's gonna genesis the flippin' moon like I said. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. Oh, yeah. I shall leave you as you left me. Ooh. As you dead planet. Buried alive. Oh my days, that's intense. <laughs> there it is, there it is, the famous con line. Oh, there it is again. Oh, yes. And the music echoes the con with the score. Oh, that's so awesome. I don't understand. Who's responsible for all this? It's con, lady. Who is? He literally shouted her na his name. It's a long story. We appear to have plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't watched the TV show, so you can tell me. In the lieutenant, our idea of food. We can't just sit here. I am so excited to see this. And I wanted him in mine, not chasing through the universe with his father. Oh, okay, okay. I think I understand their relationship now. What am I feeling? Old. Worn out. The age thing coming back from the start of the movie. live there substantially accelerated rate wow, the waterfall in the background where's the enterprise who knows where is she probably gone back to starfleet like they were told to or maybe hiding on the other side of the moon maybe they did like a little loop around as you looped around as well lieutenant you are looking at the only Starfleet cadet who ever beat the no win. Ah, he beat it in J.J. Abrams' first one as well. It's possible to rescue the ship. What? He cheated. I changed the conditions of the test. <laughs> he says that in the that J. J. Abrams one as well. Director Spock, it's two hours. Are you ready? Right on schedule, Admiral. Just give us your coordinates and we'll beam you aboard. All right. Yes, he doesn't believe in the no win scenario. You lied. I exaggerated. Hours instead of days. Now we have minutes instead of hours. Yes. 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 They're inoperative, low sea deck. What is we're here on? Not much, Admiral. We have partial main power. I knew Spock must have been doing some form of code. I was going to say it. I was like, I wonder if this is code. But then, ah, I told you they did a little loop around. I told you they did a little loop around. I'm literally smarter than Khan. Big mega mind brain on my head. Admiral on the bridge. Battle stations. Battle stations! Won't function and shields will be useless. Sauce for the goose, Mr. Savick. 
Sauce for the goose, exactly. Be even. Dude, the model work and effects are really good in this movie. I was expecting them to be worse than the first one, but they're pretty good. The nebula looks beautiful. Reliant is closing. Good. Oh my god, that shot was so cold. This is Admiral Kirk. We tried it once your way, Khan. Are you game for a rematch? Khan. I'm game for a rematch. I'm laughing at the superior intellect. Full impulse power. His intellectual mind, his ego is too big for himself. As I feared, sir, not functional. I'm reducing speed. Never reduce speed while you're on a chase, son. Whoa, look at that, look at that. Look who is chasing who now. Ooh, you just missed, you just missed. Good try. Aft torpedoes, fire! Wow, well, they have aft torpedoes, that's cool. You suck though, that was the worst miss of all time. Hold your course. Whoa, look at that shot. So sexy. Oh, those people are dead. I've got to take the mains off the line. It's radiation. Scotty. Oh, the radiation. No, 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 no. His superior. I shall avenge you. Do it then, huh? Prove yourself. Sound design, the quietness, the lack of music, the only sound being the lightning in the nebula. Oh, what a reveal! Look sharp. Fire! Fire! Huh. Ah, let's go! One of their skis are down. One of the ship's skis are down. How are you gonna go skiing with one ski, son? Reliant, come in. Is he like the only one left? No, Kirk. The game's not over. Why is it not over? Oh no, is it Genesis? Is it Genesis? Is it Genesis? Oh, they're gonna launch. What if they launch Genesis at the Enterprise? Commit! He's committed! 993 seconds. Scotty, I need warp speed in three minutes or- Yeah, 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 yeah. No response, Admiral. Scotty! Mr. Sue, get us out of here. What are you thinking, Spock? What are you thinking, Spock? Are you out of your Vulcan mind? Yeah. No human can tolerate the radiation that's in- Yeah, but Spock can. What is Mr. Scott's condition? Well, I don't think that he... <laughs> oh, the Vulcan neck pinch. Guess I'm far enough away, you gotta get the warp. 4,000 kilometers. We're not gonna make it, are we? You'll make it, you'll make it. I spit my last breath at the... Is he, is he quoting Shakespeare? It sounds very Shakespearean. Nice, nice, normal, normal, let's warp. Let's Scotty. Go, go! Ah, let's go! Oh. And Khan is gone! My god, Carol, look at it. You made a whole new solar system. Jim, I think you better get down here. Oh, I forgot about Spock. I forgot about Spock, man. Not even a solar system, a planet, but it created a whole planet on its own. 
He's dead already. He's not dead already. No, 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 no. Oh, he's really dying. Out of danger. Yes. No, look at him. He's dying. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. You stupid head. You said that at the start of the movie. I should have. Oh, ha. And all we shall be your friend. My man Spock, can we have a salute? Is he actually gonna die? No, he doesn't. There's no way. I'm not having this. I'm not having Spock be dead. Are you serious? He did not feel the sacrifice of vain or empty one. And we will not debate his profound wisdom at these proceedings. Of all the souls I have encountered in my travels, his was the most human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no way he's actually dead. The music? Get out of here, you stupid head music. He's almost in the book that Spock gave him. There's gonna be a message at the end. You never have faced death. He really hasn't, hasn't he? I don't know about the show, but I guess he hasn't. Very proud to be your son. Yeah, I'm happy. There are always possibilities, Spock. And if Genesis is indeed life from death. Do you think Spock will come back from Genesis? Something Spock was trying to tell me on my birthday. You okay, Joe? How do you feel? I feel young. Oh. Are we gonna see Spock? Are we gonna see Spock on this planet? It's there. I'm glad we didn't see it open. Space, the final frontier. The final frontier. To boldly go where no man has gone. Before. Ah, where no one has gone before, where no man has gone before, let's go! Oh, yes. That movie was so good. Spock's not dead. He's not dead. But I'm glad that they kept it, like, on a little cliffhanger, you know? Oh, you gotta watch the next movie to find out if he's dead or not. He's probably not dead, but... What did you think of that movie, Huxley? Did you like it? It was pretty good. It was really good. I think you liked it. I think you loved it. And that was my reaction to Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, the 1982 sci-fi. <laughs> Google it sci-fi slash sci-fi. <laughs> Thanks, Google. Thank you so much. I didn't I didn't know that it was sci-fi slash sci-fi, but man, that movie was so good. That movie was so good. It was way better than the first Star Trek movie, and I liked the first Star Trek movie. I think the first Star Trek movie still had like the scale and the scope of this adventure, like the scale and scope of the first Star Trek movie's adventure definitely felt bigger in the first movie, but everything else, this movie did better. Everything else, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan did so much better. The plot, the characters, the, the music, I mean, the music in the first movie is amazing. The music in this movie is amazing as well. So probably those ones are very similar. The effects are still amazing in this one. I think maybe sometimes even better. Actually, no, I can't say that. The, the, I, since I watched the director's edition, it was like updated effects. Those effects were insane. So I think the effects, but the effects for 1982 of this movie were insanely good. The model work was out of this world. The villain, Khan, was amazing. And I really enjoyed that this movie was super accessible to me, someone who has not seen the show. I said it a lot in my reaction that I haven't seen this show, so I'm sorry if you got annoyed by that at all bless you. But I was really, really thankful that the movie gave me enough backstory on Khan to totally understand the motivation of his character and just his character in general. And so going into this movie, not having seen the show, I don't necessarily need to have done that groundwork. It would have helped and I probably would have gotten a lot more deeper character stuff from it, character motivation stuff from seeing the show. But seeing the show and seeing the episodes that Khan is in, episode or episodes that Khan is in, is not necessary viewing material to watch this movie and I'm really really happy 
happy. I was going to say proud, like, oh, I'm proud of you, son, like this movie's my son. But I'm really happy that the movie did that because it made this movie super accessible. In the first movie, I was definitely a little confused at times with where characters were standing. And that's obviously because I hadn't seen the show. So that is just that is just not the movie's fault. That is my fault. But the movie didn't do an ins like a really good job at explaining what the characters' positions were and stuff to people who have maybe never seen the show before. I wanted to give Star Trek a try with the first movie. This movie, Star Trek II, felt like such a good introduction to the cast, to the characters, to these villains that we haven't seen before, but you have seen in the TV show. It just felt like a very good way to introduce an audience who has not seen the TV show into these characters as well, because never in this movie did I ever really feel confused. The only time I felt a little bit confused was when uh, Kirk was talking to that lady who maybe was like once a lover and something like that. I was just confused about what the relationship used to be like, and then that guy was her son, so that was almost like a plot twist for me. I was like, oh, that kid is Kirk's son, and obviously you would have known that. And so like their hug at the end, like it didn't hit me emotionally, like maybe it would if you've seen the show, but this movie is very accessible, and that is the Thing that I'm trying to that's the thing I'm trying to say this movie is very accessible to everyone and I really enjoyed that okay so I'm gonna get into the reviews of this movie and then I'm going to get into the music and then just the effects the model work the the script slash the story and stuff like that and just the ending things that I really liked about this movie because there wasn't a moment in this movie that I disliked or there wasn't a moment in this movie that I thought felt very slow or just kind of badly paced I thought this was a really really well crafted and well made movie not even just a star trek movie but movie in general okay so 7.7 .7 out of 10 on imdb which is audiences and 86 percent ron tomatoes which is critics this movie's audience and critics score is miles higher than the star trek the motion picture movie than the first star trek are you okay it's miles better and i can see why people have told me throughout my career at life that this is one of the better star trek movies if not the best star trek movie and I'll already, I will already have to agree with you. This movie will be really tough to top, in my opinion, because there are so many good moments, good characters, good story beats in this film that I just don't see another Star Trek movie topping. It's possible. It's possible that maybe Star Trek VI or something is um, insane, is insane. But I, I don't know. This one is going to be a great competition, and I'm really glad that audiences and critics really love this movie. The score of this film was absolutely phenomenal. I thought it was on par with the first movie's soundtrack, and that is something that uh, I didn't think this movie would get to do because this is the second movie in the franchise. I was like, okay, the score is just going to be like a revamped version. Oh, are you okay? The score is just going to be this revamped version of the first movie score and I was like eh, it's probably just not going to be as good it'll be decent but it won't be as good sorry my dog is like walking around under the desk at the moment but James Horner did such a fantastic job with the score making his own melodies but also incorporating the actual Star Trek theme and stuff like that and the Enterprise theme all these theme songs that have been in the TV show and maybe were made for the first movie he incorporated them into his own score while still making it his own it was beautiful it was majestic but it was also terrifying at times there were moments where it was almost like a horror movie. I gotta let the dog out. Goodbye, Huxley. And I think that my favorite piece of score was when Spock's casket was getting shot into space and they just, the bagpipe song turned into this orchestral eargasm song. It was so beautiful. It was so sad, but there was also like hope sprinkled into the score. You know, it felt hopeful, not uplifting, but hopeful and it was it was beautiful and it was making me tear up and yeah i thought the score was amazing but also the sound design in this movie like the teleportation devices i forget what they're called at the the warp warp is that known warp is the ship but maybe warp is also the teleportation devices but you know the teleportation devices the sound effects for those was amazing the ship sounds like the creaks and the groans of the ship and the laser beams pew, 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 and the phasers pew, pew, pew. you know all of that stuff felt really really cool to just listen to on the headphones and then my favorite part of the sound design was actually when they were in the nebula and there was this moment where all the music just faded and all you could hear was the lightning crackling and just flashing on screen in the nebula and it was so intense and so stressful 
it was beautiful sound design. That's all I can say. It was beautiful sound design. The effects and the model work in this movie as well were so good. Obviously, they didn't compare to the grandeur of the first Star Trek movie. And I think the first Star Trek movie was maybe even just to provide this sense of grandeur for fans of the TV show because the story and stuff in the first movie is a little bit lackluster. It's very, very slow, obviously, the nickname slow motion picture. And the effects in this one definitely did not live up to the sense of grandeur that the first movie had. But that doesn't mean that they were bad. They were still really good. Like, I didn't find myself going, oh, like, I didn't find myself going, oh, these are very jarring effects. These, these are really bad and stuff. Like, never did I do that in the movie. There were sometimes there were effects that were a little bit iffy, maybe a little bit dated. But for the most part, the effects in this movie were so good. And I think it's because there were so many practical effects in this movie, from the map paintings in the background to however they made the nebula it was it was beautiful however they made that maybe it was just another map painting but sometimes it looked like it was moving and the clouds are moving and stuff it was great the ships the models of the two ships were fantastic the enterprise is a sexy ship as always the planets that they were on just i don't know everything about this movie even the laser blasts in this movie looks so good and i don't know i was just really impressed i was assuming that as the franchise goes down the list of movies that the budget would start to be decreased every time and the effects would start to look a little bit jankier every time but the effects in the first one only looked as amazing as they did I think because it was like a remastered version that I watched but I was expecting the effects to be janky in this one or at least way jankier than than that first Star Trek but it looked on par as good as a remastered version just with less grandeur like it was amazing also I would just like to talk about the ending really quickly because I thought the ending of this movie was so good and I was just like sitting in silence during the credits for like a minute and a half or two minutes or something and just thinking about the ending because it's spot dead I don't know if he's dead or not I hope he's not on the poster of Star Trek 3 because then I'll really be on the edge of my seat I don't think he's dead but if he is dead then whoa what a good death and if he isn't dead then oh what a good ending and I really really enjoyed that they didn't show his casket open or his casket moving because I think that really would have ruined the ending and it would have been like oh he's not dead but now you just done the movie and you're left wondering if he comes back in the third one I'm okay with that but because he didn't come back at the end of this one it really just leaves you with this sense of man like it's this deep sadness it's this very heavy movie at the end but at the same time with what Kirk says and what people say around him bones and stuff like that and then also just the score it's a little bit hopeful and then we end with that famous Star Trek monologue where no man has gone before and stuff and you get the zoom into space and then the credits and it feels it feels revigorated again you know it feels like life will find a way not to quote Jurassic Park or anything but it, that's what it feels like and so it's very sad and heavy but there is a sense of hope. And I think if Spock had come back to life at the end of this movie, even, even if he comes back to, at the end of three, this doesn't ruin the end of this one. If he came back to life at the end of this movie, it would have ruined that hopeful feeling because he would have just been like, oh, like who cares about the heaviness of this movie now? Like whatever, but yeah, that hit so deep. I hope he isn't dead, but if he is dead, then it's such a good death. Also, I want to compare the, the similarities between Star Trek 2, this one, and Star Trek Into Darkness. There were so many similarities, and obvious, and actually similarities between the first J.J. Abrams movie and Star Trek Into Darkness, because the Kobay Kobayashi Maru tests and stuff is in the first Star Trek J.J. Abrams movie, and then they have something similar, but in Star Trek Into Darkness, because we have Khan in that one, we have Khan in this one, the, we have that radioactive sequence, it's just Chris Pine's Jim Kirk getting stuck in the radioactive secret sequence instead of Spock and then Jim Kirk basically dies and stuff like that. But I think the issue with Star Trek Into Darkness is that they just bring him back on like this, almost like a technicality, like, oh, we have some of Khan's DNA so we can just bring him back to life. And so it kind of ruins the sadness of the moment because you know in 10 minutes, he's just going to be alive again where on this one audiences would have i only have to wait probably two weeks because i'm going on a trip so i only have to wait like two weeks but audiences would have had to wait potentially years to see if spock was alive or to see if spock was coming back so i can't imagine the pain the pain for that and i'm hoping he comes back in star trek 3 but again i don't know but yeah a lot of similarities and very similar plot points 
between Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and Star Trek Into Darkness. And because I watched Star Trek Into Darkness first, I always assumed it was just like this really cool creative movie. But now after I've watched this one, I was like, it kind of stole a lot of moments from the original R Wrath of Khan for Into Darkness. It's very, it's very interesting seeing the newer movies first and then watching the older movies and having this huge nostalgia for the newer movies, but now seeing the older movies and going, hmm, a lot of things are very similar between the two. You know, it is it is very interesting. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, and Ricardo Montalban. Mon Montalban? I, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced the name. Everyone else in the cast they did a really amazing job, and I thought Kirsty Alley as Savick was a really good addition to the squad, and obviously she's gonna be in more movies. I'm hoping she'll be in more movies, because I thought she was really cool. Obviously, if Spock's dead, we need another Vulcan on board. She was a Vulcan, so I thought Savick was a really cool character to have. I thought Bones was great. I thought Scotty was great. I thought Chekhov was really cool in this movie. Sulu didn't do too much in this movie. He just put it into warp a few times, and that's about it. But Ricardo Montalban as Khan was amazing amazing. He was so menacing. He was so threatening, but he didn't feel as intelligent as maybe maybe he should have been, I guess. I don't know. There were definitely intelligent moments in this movie, but he never felt as megamind as he said he was. But I think that was almost the point of the movie because he was so infatuated with killing Captain James T. Kirk. Well, I guess Admiral James T. Kirk in this movie. He was so infatuated by it that it almost dissolved any intelligence that he had. Yes, he was doing a lot of intelligent things in this movie and stuff, but he made a lot of mistakes. And I think that's just because he was so angry. He was so frustrated. He was almost, as Vulcans would say, he was letting his emotions take advantage of him. And I think that is the reason why he didn't feel as Megamind-esque <laughs> and, as, and as intelligent as maybe he was saying he was and I have no doubt that he is as intelligent as he says he is but I think what the movie was almost going for with this character was this man who is super intelligent but is being overwhelmed by these uh, emotions of revenge and rage and frustration and sadness and I really like that with this character it provided this really interesting character and I loved every single second he was on screen. Leonard Nimoy or Leon Leonard? Leonard? I think it's Leonard Nimoy as Spock. I'm, again, I, my, my Star Trek video hasn't come out yet, so if I'm mispronouncing this name that I don't know about it, you guys will tell me in the comments. I will probably be by the time I do Star Trek 3. If he's in that movie, I'll have pronounced it right. I think it's Leonard, but it could be Leonard, but I think it's Leonard. But as Spock, he is so good. Again, he is the Spock. I, don't, I didn't think he had as much to do in this movie as he did in the first movie movie, but I still thought he was amazing. I loved the secret code thing that he did with, with Jim when he was on the planet and he and uh, Spock was on the Enterprise and stuff like that and I just thought he was really awesome. I liked how he was training the recruits. He was very nice in this movie. Spock was super nice in this movie and obviously very selfless at the end. You know, I take back what I said. He actually did a lot in this movie now that I think about it. It just didn't feel like he did as much as he did in the first one because he had like this huge major plot point in this one and in this one he wasn't searching for anything but he was helping train and helping do all these actions and stuff and obviously he saved the day in the end and then he died and man I hope he's not dead but at the same time if he is dead then it was a really good send off for the character. And last but not least is William Shatner as James T. Kirk. I thought this was so much better than the first one for his character. There was so much more depth to him and so much more, not, not necessarily personality, but there was a lot more happening under the surface. You could see it in his face. There were these little inflections that he would do that weren't as present. You know, there were these subtleties that William Shatner brought to Kirk in this movie that were not present in the first movie. And I think that's because we had these relationships with both Khan and Harold. So we had like these very personal relationships, some hardships within these relationships, and he had the son as well. And so there was a lot to think over, obviously Spock's death at the end and stuff like that. There were these complexities and subtleties in his looks, in his glances, in his stances that were not present at all in the first movie. And I thought his character, Jim's character, or William Shatner's character, I should say, was way more compelling 
in this movie than he was in the first Star Trek movie. And yeah, that is my reaction and review to Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, the 1982 sci-fi slash sci-fi film. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. So yeah, uh, I will be taking a two week break from watching any movies because I'm going on vacation, which I'm really, really excited for. But I'm really also excited to get back and watch Star Trek 3 because I really like this franchise so far and I'm hoping it stays at at least a adequate level but I'm really enjoying it so far I've enjoyed the first one I really liked the second one and you know I'm, I'm really looking forward to the rest so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction